मैथमेटिकल लॉजिक और मैथमेटिकल रीजनिंग दिस टॉपिक मेजरली डील्स विथ मैथमेटिकल स्टेटमेंट्स विच कैन हेल्प टू अराइव एट वैलिड कंक्लूशन वॉट इज मैथमेटिकल लॉजिक लॉजिक इज अ प्रोसेस विच हेल्प अस टू अराइव एट वैलिड कंक्लूशन सो से फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन हैव अ स्टेटमेंट विच ईदर विल से इट्स ट्रू और फॉल्स सो सच स्टेटमेंट्स आर कॉल्ड एज मैथमेटिकली एक्सेप्टेबल स्टेटमेंट्स दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज प्रपोजिशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑक्सीजन इज अ गैस फाइव इज अ प्राइम नंबर टू इज एन इवन नंबर सो ऑल ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट्स आर प्रूवन स्टेटमेंट्स एंड दे आर ऑल ऑफ दैम ईदर ट्रू और फॉल्स सो ऑक्सीजन इज अ गैस सो इट्स ट्रू फाइव इज अ प्राइम नंबर इट इज ट्रू टू इज एन इवन नंबर दैट इज ट्रू थ्री इज एन ऑड नंबर दैट्स ऑल्सो ट्रू the the outcome of every statement can either be true or false for another example say where it is false 5 is a even number that is false 2 is a odd number that is false so all of these statements are called as mathematical acceptable statements now there are statements which are not uh, mathematically acceptable such as you know statements which uh, are questions exclamations opinions for example weather is pleasant today so this is a subjective statement it can be pleasant today it can be something else tomorrow so this changes so this is this does not give a fixed true or false as an answer because it is subjective based on the person place and time similarly all the best this is just an exclamation there is nothing that you can tell that it is true or false today is a sunday today is a sunday but tomorrow it could be something else right but tomorrow it could be a monday so this is also not a statement which gives true or false as a answer it can change based on time place person so such statements are not propositions we also have compound statement what is compound statement it's a combination of one or more statements or one or more propositions when i say propositions it's one or more mathematically acceptable propositions or statements so for example oxygen is a gas and five is a prime number this entire thing is a compound statement if you see there are two statements here one is oxygen is a gas second thing five is a prime number and both of them are connected with and so and is the connector between these two statements similarly we have three is an odd number or logic is easy now again this is one statement this is another statement both are connected with the word called as or so or is a connector here it's a logical connector another one if abc gets 75% attendance then e can write as final exams so this if and then are actually connecting two statements here abc gets 75% attendance and e can write as final exams another example where abc can write as final exams if and only if e gets 75% attendance again this is one statement and this is another statement both of them are connected with if and only if so this is a logical connector so let's take another example where Three is not an even number. This not represents negation. So this is another logical connector. So if you see, there are five logical connectives: and, or, if, then, if and only if, and not. So the entire mathematical logic and reasoning topic deals with these five logical connectives. So all the problems that we are going to get is going to be around these five connectives. here are the logical connectives and the way they are denoted if then is denoted as a right arrow if and only if is a bidirectional arrow and you have and or and not now for conjunction what is conjunction conjunction is nothing but and we have two statements say for example p and q p is a statement where 3 is an odd number q is a statement where 3 plus 4 is equal to 8 now these two statements can be connected with and this way p conjunct q so we call this as conjunct Three is an odd number. This is true. Q three plus four is eight. This is false. Now we can arrive at a truth table. What is truth table? It it tells the combinations of truth values for P and Q statements. It can be any number of statements. It can be P Q R S any number of statements. Now let's consider two statements for now. P and Q. So if for conjunction if p and q both of them are true only then the uh, p conjunct q is true if if one of the statements is false then the result is false 
if both the statements are false even then the result is false so the only way that p conjunct q can be true is when both p and q statements return true so in this case p conjunct q is false because p is true but q is false now let's take disjunction what is disjunction nothing but the or connective so if you say we have the same two examples say we use the same two statements 3 is an odd number and 3 plus 4 is 8 and if we have to say that p is disjunct q then we will have to write it as p or q or p this particular symbol which tells that this is disjunct q this is the two table for disjunction will appear even if one of the statements is true then the output is true or the the final answer is true so in this case p is true q is true so p disjunct q is true it's false when both the statements are false say in this case 3 is an odd number this is true 3 plus 4 is 8 this is false so what is p disjunct q it is true whereas in conjunction it is false now assume that in this example we modify this take it as 3 plus 5 what will happen now 3 plus 5 is 8 so it is this becomes true 3 plus 5 is 8 so this again becomes true so now what will happen p conjunct q becomes true because true and true is true and in this case both of these are true so it is still remain as true as you might modified it to 3 is an even number and i modified this q statement also so what will happen 3 is an even number this will be false 3 plus 6 is 8 this is also false so what will be p disjunct q it will be false because two false statements will result in a false let us talk about negation now what is negation negation is a statement where we have a not so for example if p is a statement where 3 is an odd number then not p would be 3 is not an odd number so we just put a not and that becomes negation for p so this is how it is denoted for not now how does the truth table for negation look look like simple if p is true uh, not p would be false if p is false not p would be true it's just going to be the reverse so let's take another uh, logical connective which is conditional statement what is a conditional statement a statement which has if then so consider we have two statements p and q 3 is an odd number and 3 plus 1 is an even number now it is already proven and stated that 3 is an odd number and q is telling that 3 plus 1 is an even number which is true if you add 1 to 3 it's going to be an even number so this is true and this is also true so what happens p conditional q is true now if i say i just remove this 3 plus 1 if i say 3 is an even number what will happen this is going to become false now if i say 3 is an even number this is going to be a violation of this particular condition because 3 is a known a uh, fact that 3 is an odd number so now in such cases p conditional of q is going to become false so there's only one case if you look at the truth table there's only one case where p conditional of q is going to be false this is the only case when the statement p is true and the statement q is false everything else is going to be true so it's going to be simple we just have to remember that there's only one combination for conditional truth table where there is going to be a false and that is when p is true and q is false what is biconditional biconditional statement is nothing but statements which have if and only if as a connector so how it is denoted it's denoted as p double arrow q this is called as p biconditional q see assume that we have statement p where a is an odd number a is some integer and q is another statement where which states that a plus 1 is an even number similar to the above example right so in this case p by conditional q becomes true only if p is true and q is true both of them have to be true or both of them have to be false both of them have to be true or both of them have to be false if both the statements are having the same values the truth values then p by conditional q is true 
here is a truth table if p is true and q is true then p by conditional q is true but if any one of the truth values of the statements is different from the other then p by conditional q is false so here is the truth table for all logical connectives and or not if then if and only if now we have p and q with all combinations of true and false here so if p is true and q is true what is p conjunct q so p conjunct q will be true only if both the statements are true so remember that p conjunct q is always true only if both the statements p and q are true so only in this case it's going to be true remaining everything else it's going to be false right let's come to the second one or p disjunct q p disjunct q is going to be false only when both the statements are false when p is false and q is false p disjunct q is going to be false everything else is going to be true now let's come to negation negation of p is nothing but the reverse of p so if p is true then negation would be false if p is true it's going to be false so p is false so negation of p is going to be true and true here this is pretty simple the next one is p conditional q it seems little tricky but as we practice this becomes the simplest of all because this has only one condition one combination when p conditional q is going to be false and that is when p is true and q is false so basically if p is true q q cannot be false if it is false then the result is going to be false everything else is going to be true the last one when p and q both are having the same truth values it can be either true true or false false so both the truth values of the statements should be the same so in that case the the answer would be true and here also will be true and the rest would be false all the red colored ones is what we'll have to remember right we don't have to buy out everything row by row cell by cell column by column all we have to remember is to summarize p and q is true if both the statements are true p or q is false if both the statements are false and negation anyway it's just going to be reverse of whatever truth value the statement has p conditional q is only one case when it's going to be false when p is true and q is false and the last bidirectional one this is going to be true when both p and q is going to have the same values let's take an example we have three statements here p q r p states that x is a real number for q maths is easy and r tells that today is a holiday so we will have to write all of these expressions in verbal form so this is p or q remember this is or so what will happen between p and q we will just put or just copy the p statement x is a real number or what is q maths is easy so just remember Rem just remember to put this or as a connector between these two statements so in this entire exercise we'll have to put the connectors now what is this this is nothing but and so we will have to put and here and same statement will copy third one what do we have this is not negation so not so p is x is a real number so we will put x is not a real number and what is this this is and so we'll say and just copy whatever our statement is r is today is a holiday today is a holiday let's take the fourth one q what is q statement maths is easy and what is this this is nothing but and so we'll first put and as a connector there is not r that is negation of statement r r is today is a holiday so it would be today is not a holiday because it's negative r and this is q so we just write q as is maths is easy now let's take the next example this is or 
anything that looks like v right it's or anything that looks like the reverse of v is and so p or r so we we'll have to have or between p and r p is we we'll just have p statement write the p statement here or r r statement just copy r statement and we also have if then condition here if then condition so when we have if then condition we we'll have to put if in the beginning and then just before statement q so if it will be like this if x is a real number or today is a holiday then maths is easy what is q maths is easy so these connectors we have to remember now in this case in this example p bi directional q so what is bi directional q if and only if first we we'll write statement p which is x is a real number now what should come if and only if if and only if now this is p if and only if q what is q maths is easy just copy that then we have or r so let's put or r r is today is a holiday so now what does this example say p or r this is or this is and and this is negation so we will write p statement x is a real number now what should come or r r is today is a holiday then we have and negation of q maths is easy so negation of q would be maths is not easy so x is a real number or today is a holiday and maths is not easy the last one p and not q what is p x is a real number and not q what is not q q is maths is easy and maths is not easy so we have we have finished this now there is a conditional r so whenever there is conditional this is nothing but if then so what me what does it mean so in we need to start this so we need to start this with if if x is a real number and maths is not easy then then we will have to negate r r is today is a holiday negation of r is today is not a holiday today is not a holiday so we have p and negation of q p is x is a real number negation of q is maths is not easy and we have conditional sign here so we'll have to put if then so we'll have to put if here and we need to put then where do we have to put then just before this this particular statement r just before r we'll have to put then then today is not a holiday let us take an example where we have to symbolize the following propositions so we have 3x is equal to 9 and x less than 7 so let's take 3x is equal to 9 as p and x less than 7 as q so we have and here so what is and this is the notation for it so the answer is p and q second one let's take this as p and this as q we have or so this is the notation for or so this is the answer so here is another example if two numbers are equal then their squares are not equal so two numbers are equal this is one statement say it's p squares are not equal their squares are not equal this statement is q but there is not so we'll make it as not q so and there is also if and then which means there is a conditional sign here so this is going to be p conditional not q if oxygen is a gas then gold is a compound let's symbolize this oxygen is a gas so p is we'll have to write this 
let P be oxygen is a gas and Q be gold is a compound. So we write P Q and they are connected with if then. So we will have this notation P condition of Q. Let's take an example where the proposition, the truth values for propositions are given. So we have three propositions P, Q, R. So for these three statements, the truth value is being given as F, T, F. So which is P is F, Q is true and R is false or F. So this is the expression that we have. Let's see if we put these values, these truth values in this expression. What is the final truth value that we get? So not P is not of, not P is true, I put this true, true condition of Q. What is Q? Q is true. This is or, or R, false. Now, remember the truth table for conditional statement? It is false only if P is true and Q is false. Everything else is true. So, so this becomes true or false. And or truth table, in the or truth table, even if one statement is true, the final truth value is going to be true. So the answer for this expression is true. So let's take another example or another expression. So P is, P is false, Q is true, R is false. So P is false or R is false, not of this conditional not Q, not Q is false. Now in the OR truth table, if there are two false statements, then the final truth value is false. And this is not a false, this is false. So not a false is true, true, conditional, false. Now in this case, one statement is true, the next statement is false. So this is the case where the final truth value is going to be false for conditional truth table. So answer is false. Let's take another expression. Just for your reference, let's put the truth table for P tends to Q. So so for P conditional Q, only one combination gives false. When P is true and Q is false, everything else is true. Let's remember this. And for biconditional number, that when both the statements are true, only then the truth value is true in this case. Other cases are false. Now using this truth table, so let's put P is false, conditional of Q which is true or not, P is false, by conditional to Q which is true. So P is false and true. Let's look at FT, it is true here. Or in biconditional, in biconditional, false and true is false. Refer this. So the not of true is false, or not of false is true. So what happens in this or truth table? Any one statement is true. The the value is final truth value is true. So answer is true for this one. Let's consider the truth table for this particular expression. So what do we have to do? There are three statements here, P, Q, R. Let's form the truth table with P, Q, R. So we'll put all the combinations. Let's take P as true first, Q as true, R as true. Then you'll have to just put the combinations. True, false, false, true, false, false. This is all with true, then we'll take false, copy the same thing, true, 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 false, false, true, false. This is all with P as false. Let's first put negation of Q here and then we have P conditional of negation of Q and P conditional of negation of Q and R. So what is negation of Q? Let's reverse all the values of Q here, false. False, true, true, false, false, true, true. Now, we'll take the next column, P conditional negation of Q. So, 
that is we'll have to take this column and this column. So we know in the conditional truth table, in only one combination, it's going to be false. If P is true and Q is equal to false, then P tends to Q is false. Everything else is going to be true. So let's remember only this one. So let's find TF combination. TF. We have T here, F here. So this is going to be false. Then we have TF here also. So this is going to be false. Any any place we have TFs? No. So everything else is going to be blindly true. So this is the technique. We don't have to always you know, remember the entire truth table and keep inferring all of these values. We just remember the odd or the combination which is different. So in conditional table, only when there is uh, P is true and Q is false, you have the value as false. Everything else is going to be true. Let's go to the next column where we will have to uh, take this expression and and it with R. That is this column. This one and this one. So we will have to apply and on these two columns. So for and condition, both the statements have to be true for the final value to be true. So we'll have to that is if P is true and Q is true, only then P and Q is going to be true. Everything else is going to be false. So let's find P and T combination. So we'll have to find, we'll have to use this column and R, these two columns. So we need to find T and T combination. This is T, F, F, F. Yeah, here there is T and T combination. So this is true. Where else do we have T and T combination? This one also, this one also, everything else is false. This is how we have to construct a truth table. We will have to always find the odd combination out, write the values for the odd combination and everything else we will have to just blindly put the values. Let's take another example where we have to construct the truth table for this expression. Let's write P, Q, R because we have three statements here, P, Q, R. We'll have to write all the combinations of truth values. So let's start with P as true and this is true, true, T, F, F, T, F, F. Now we'll continue the same thing with F. We'll just copy the above values, above combinations, true, true, P, F, F T F F. Now the first expression is P conditional R. P conditional R. Second ex expression is P conditional Q. And the final one is we'll have to do and between both of these statements. So P conditional R and P conditional Q. So we will use that tip for conditional truth table where only when P is true and Q is false, P conditional Q is false. Everything else is going to be true. So let's find TF combinations. This is between P and R now. So it is between this two columns. So P and R, we'll have to find P and F combinations. P and F, this one is there. This one is also there. That's all. So this is going to be false and false. Everything else is going to be true. So we don't have to remember each and every combination in the truth table. Just find the odd man out. Remember that and the remaining things we can simply infer. So similarly now we'll find P conditional Q. So this is between P and Q. That's between this and this. So P and Q. So the same combination PF combination we'll have to find. PF this one again here nowhere else so everything else is going to be true now let's go to the last column where we have to and or conjunct both of these expressions so we will have to use this column and this column we will have to use the and truth table so in and truth table both the statements have to be true for P and Q to be true. Both the statements have to be true. Right? So we will find P and T combination. So this is between 
this column and this column t and t combinations this one is true now all of this everything else is going to be false so this is a truth table for this particular expression so we will have to remember all of these techniques while filling the truth table there are two concepts in mathematical logic one is tautology and contradiction what is tautology if we have a compound proposition say we have multiple statements multiple propositions like p q r and so on if all the uh, components of that particular proposition gives value as true then it is called tautology say for example right we have p q and say some expression something for example if all the truth combinations are true 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 right then this is called as tautology similarly instead of all being true if it is false then it's called as contradiction so let's go over examples so let's take an example let's see if this is going to be a tautology or not so let's start writing the truth table we have only two statements here p and q p and q so we'll quickly write the truth values true true t f f t f f not p then we'll have to take this one then p or q let's call let's call this a second so one or two and then let's call this as three three conditional q so what is negation of p it's going to be false false true and true p or q so in or condition if any one of them is true then the final truth value is going to be true so all this is going to be true only the last one where both of them are false it's going to be as false then the next one is to take uh, truth values for these two columns not p or p or q so we'll have to take these two columns so again in or condition only if both the statements are false it's going to be false so we don't have any case where both the statements are false so everything is going to be true true and true now let's take the next column where this expression we will have to uh, apply conditional to q so we know in conditional uh, truth table only if p is true and q is false p tends to q or p conditional q is going to be false everything else is going to be true so let's find this tf combination we don't have tf combination anywhere so everything else is going to be true in that case so now looking at this column all the values are true which means this is a tautology let's take another example where we have to determine whether it is tautology contradiction or it's neither so let's take the statements p and q and draw the chart draw the truth table true 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 false false true false false so we'll first take negation of q then we'll take p and negation of q then we'll find p and q so let's take this as column 1 column 2 we'll have to take column 1 conditional of column 2 so this is the final column so negation of q is going to be just the reverse false true false true now p and negation of q so we'll have to take p and negation of q so in and we know that both the statements have to be true for the final truth value to be true so do we see both trues here yeah here there is true so everything else is going to be false now we'll go to the second uh, column which is p and q again for p and q both should be true for the final truth value to be true so p and q so it's between these two p and q yeah so this one is going to be true everything else is going to be false now the last column we'll have it's between these two columns we'll have to apply the conditional truth values in conditional truth values only if p is true and q is false p conditional q is going to be false so let's find for tf combinations there's only one here 
this is going to be false everything else is going to be true so this is neither a contradiction nor a tautology it is neither let's take another example let's determine if it's tautology contradiction or neither so p q p and q not p then we have p and q and not p so let's write the combinations so p and q for p and q the final value is going to be true only if both are true so only here it's going to be true everything else is going to be false negation of p just reverse it now we'll 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 and we'll conjugate both of these columns so p and q and negation of p so again both the value should be true for the final value to be true so we don't have any tt combination here so everything is going to be false so this is an example of this is nothing but contradiction let's talk about logical equivalence now there are multiple laws which we will have to remember double negation where we negate a statement two times it's going to be the statement itself and p or p is going to be p p and p is going to be p similarly we have commutative laws p or q is going to be q or p p and q is equivalent to q and p associative laws we just split it like this then we have distributive laws here what's going to happen is p or q we are going to split it separately and then p or r is going to be split separately and then there is going to be a and which will separate these two expressions de morgan's laws this is one of the key set of uh, laws which you will have to remember negation of p and q if you observe this we are going to split it negation of p negation of q instead of and we are going to put or similarly here there is or so we are going to put and and there are there is another two laws here negation of p conditional q so instead of conditional you will have to put and and it's going to be negation of q similarly here this is by conditional in by conditional it's going to be same thing same thing as conditional we're going to have an addition or the reverse of this combination let's solve a few examples here now we will have to negate this expression negate this so what what does it mean it will be negative of this entire thing so now we see the negation laws here this one de morgan's law so when we have it is of this format negation of this p and q so what we are going to do we are going to split it like this so it's going to be negation of p we'll split it so and is going to become or negation of q conditional p so we've used this particular law here now after this we'll further split it now we will have to use this particular law it's of this format negation of p conditional q what is that it's p and negation of q same thing here q and negation of p let's take another example where we have to negate this expression now we will first split this there is a negate within brackets we'll split this and write it as so this is going to be negate q or negate p and r this can be written as we'll have to split this because we have negate outside we'll have to use this law so it's going to be so instead of or we're going to is going to be reverse it's going to be and and it's going to be it's going to be negation of negation of q or the second statement which is this one so if you look at this this is negation of q and negation of negation becomes this particular expression itself through negation law double negation so it's going to be p and r so let's take another example where we'll have to find p conditional q and 
negation of R. We'll have to negate this entire thing. So it's going to be negation of P. Now, if you see this, it looks like this particular law. So assume that this is Q for us. So it will be P condition of Q, negation of this. We'll have to find this. So which means it's going to be P and Q. What is Q? It is Q and negation of R. The entire thing has to be negated here. Now we'll have to apply the negation law. What does it say? We'll have to split it. So negation of Q, it will get splitted and will become R. And this is going to be negation of negation R. So there is double negation here. So it's going to be P and negative Q or R. Let's solve logical equivalence related problems where we have to negate the propositions. Now we have one example here where weather is fine and my friends are not coming or we do not go to a movie. So for any logical equivalence uh, problems, right, we will have to remember these laws, associative law, distributive law, negation laws, De Morgan's laws. So I've just highlighted the key uh, laws here. Using these laws, we can solve all of the logical equivalence problems. Now, in this particular example, first what we have to do is identify the propositions. We have three propositions here. Weather is fine, friends are not coming, and we do not go to a movie. So let's call this as P, Q, and R. Now remember one thing, whenever we are going to write the propositions or the statements, the not should not be there. It should be positive basically. It should not be negated once. So, so let P be whether his fine, Q be my friends are coming. Do not negate it. R be we do not we go to a movie. So let's symbolize this. We'll get P and friends are not coming. So not of Q, negation of Q or not of R. Let's put this in brackets because there is this is a compound uh, proposition with two simple propositions. Right? So now we'll have to negate this entire thing. So this, we'll have to use a negation rule here, which states that negation of this one, this one we'll have to use. So we'll have to split it. So it'll be, let's assume this is one unit. That is, assume that this, this is of, this is Q and P and Q. So this is going to be not of P. This and is going to become or. Or not of this entire thing. So let's split this further. This is going to be not P or now we'll have to split this using the negation rule. So what's going to happen? Or is going to become and this is going to be double negation. So it's going to be Q and R. Now let's write it in ver verbal form. What is P? Whether is not fine or what is Q? My friends are coming and we go to a movie. Let's talk about converse, inverse and contrapositive of a conditional. So whenever we have conditional statements, that is statements with if and then, there are three terminologies, converse, inverse and contrapositive. What is converse? Converse is nothing but Say, we have P conditional Q. So, converse would be reverse. That is Q conditional P. Just swap P and Q's positions. What would be inverse? Inverse would be, we'll have to negate P and negate Q. Contrapositive would be, swap what we've got in inverse. So, it'll be negate Q and negate P. So, let's, let's go through a few examples. If... So let's take this example. So this is P and this is Q and there is P conditional Q. So what, what would converse be? Converse is Q conditional P. So which is if X is equal to 2 then 
x into x minus 2 is equal to 0. What would be inverse? Inverse is negate of p and negate of q. So that will be p is if x x minus 2 not equal to 0 because it's negation of p then then x is not equal to 2. What will contra positive be now for the same thing? We will have to swap what we have got in inverse. Right? So, just swap this. This will be contra positive. If x not equal to 2, then x into x minus 2 not equal to 0. Let us take another example. If oxygen is a gas, then accountancy is easy or the child is brave. So, if oxygen is a gas, this is one proposition. Accountancy is easy is another proposition. Child is brave is another proposition. So, we have P, Q and R. So, let us first symbolize this. P, because there is if and then. P, accountancy is easy. So, Q, or or is or the child is brave so or r this is what we have now what is converse of this we can consider this as one unit right something like q so p conditional q so converse would be q conditional p which is what is q here q or r that is accountancy is easy we'll have to put if accountancy is easy or the child is brave then oxygen is a gas let's find the inverse right so inverse is negate P and negate Q. So, we will have negate P conditional negate of Q or R. Now, we will have to split this using the loss. So, it will be we have De Morgan's law, right? So, we will have negate P, negate Q, R will become AND and negate R. This is what we are going to get. So, now let us write it in verbal form. So, what do we get? If P, if oxygen is not a gas because there is not P then not Q what is not Q accountancy is not easy then accountancy is not easy and not R and the child is not brave. So, this is the inverse. What is contrapositive? Contrapositive is nothing but just swap what we have got in inverse. Right? This is inverse. Let us swap this. We just have to take this symbolic notation and swap it. So, it will be not Q and not R conditional on not P. So, now let us write it in verbal form. Not Q. If accountancy is not easy because there is not Q and not R and child is not brave, then oxygen is not a Yes. Let us take an example. If two straight lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. So, we have two propositions here. Let us take this as P and this as Q. So, P is two straight lines are parallel. Q is straight lines 
intersect. So whenever there is a not, let's not put not in the proposition. We'll just put it should be positive. They intersect. Straight lines intersect. Now let's symbolize it. So we have if then. So P conditional not Q here. Right? So what is converse for this? Converse is simple, which is Q conditional P. That is not Q conditional P. So let's write it in the verbal form. If straight lines do not intersect, then P. Then if two straight lines do not, if two straight lines do not intersect, then they are parallel. Inverse. Inverse is negation. Negation of both propositions. So neg not P conditional not Q. So what do we have here? So we have P conditional not Q. So that's going to be not P conditional. There's already a not here. So it's going to, it's going to be double negation, which is not P conditional Q. Double negation is the proposition itself, Q itself. So let's write it now in the verbal form. So not P. If two straight lines are not parallel, then they intersect. Let's arrive at contrapositive now. So what is contrapositive? Just the reverse of inverse. So what do we get here? It's not P conditional Q. So we'll get Q conditional not P. So we'll just reverse the statements now. If two straight lines, we'll take this, we'll swap this, we'll get it in the first half. If two straight lines intersect, then they are not parallel because we have not here. Now let's solve logical equivalence uh, problems where we have to prove that two compound propositions are logically equivalent. We'll have to check if they are logically equivalent or not. So we'll have to use a truth table approach for this proposition and this proposition. And then we'll have to see if whatever values we get for this proposition and for this one are same. If they are same, then it is called as logically equivalent. Let's write the truth table, PQ. Let's write all the combinations. P by conditional Q. So not P. Then we'll have not P or Q. Not Q. Not Q or P. Then we'll have to take this column and this column and use conjunction. So one conjunct. P by conditional Q. So in this case, both the truth value should be same for it to be true. So here this is true and this is true. This thing, everything else is false. Now this one, not P. Not P is false, false, true, true. Not P or Q. So we'll have to use this column and this column. So this is or. So one of them, if it is true, it will be true. So this is false, this is true. If false and true is true. Now let's come with not Q. Not Q is false, true, false, true. Now we'll have to take this column and this one. We'll have to or both of these columns, P and this column. So what do we get? True, true and true is true, false, true. Now the last column, we'll have to and this one and this one. So for and, both of the truth values should be same. True, this is false, this is false, and this is true. So now, this is one column, this is one column. For it, if you see, the truth values of this column and this column is same. That is, P by conditional Q and this compound proposition have the same truth values. So let's call this as column five and column six. So both column five and six are same. So 
this entire proposition is logically equivalent. So here's another logical equivalence uh, sum where we have to check if it is logically equivalent or not. So we have uh, two component propositions given here, right? We'll have to check if it is equivalent. Now for that, we'll have to use again the truth table format. Let's, uh, uh, there are three propositions here. So P, Q and R. So we'll have eight uh, uh, combinations of truth values. Truth, T, T, T. Let's use truth first. P, S, F, T, F, F, T, F, F. Then repeat the same thing. Let's find Q conditional R and then we'll do P conditional Q conditional R. Then the next column is P conditional Q and P conditional Q conditional R. So let's find Q conditional R. So for conditional truth values, only if there is TF case, that is if the first statement is true and the second statement is false, it is false. Everything else is going to be true. Now let's find TF case between Q and R, right? Between this and R. So here there is T and F. So this is false. Where else do we have? Here again we have false, right? Remaining else is going to be true. Now let's do P conditional, Q conditional R. So we'll have to use this column and this column. So again, let's look for TF uh, combination, TF. So this is false, T, 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 T. And so everything else is going to be true. There is no PF here. So it's going to be true. Now let's arrive at P conditional Q. P conditional Q, P and this one. So again, we'll have to look for TF combinations. This is only my third one is false. Fourth one is also false. Everything else is going to be true. Now let's apply conditional on this one and R, these two, right? So again, we'll look for TF combinations. We'll have to take this as the first uh, proposition. So We'll have to look at T's here and F's here. T, yeah, this one, this is false. T's and there is one, two F's here. Everything else is true. So let's look at, let's check if they're identical now. We'll have to check this one and this one, these two columns. It is not identical because there are changes here. So both of these columns are not identical. So not logically equivalent. 